Good afternoon, class. I'm Miss De La Peña. Are you ready for another class and learning today? Before that, please stand for the prayer. Three, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, as we embark on our journey, we humbly ask for your wisdom and guidance. Illuminate our path with the light of understanding. Strengthen our soul with the grace of challenges and fill our hearts with perseverance and patience. May we approach each problem with diligence and creativity. Knowing that through your grace, all things are possible. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Amen. Before you sit, please kindly pick a piece of trash on the floor and arrange your chair properly. For motivation, here is Mom Pepper. As we explore the thematics, remember that each concept we have over is like a piece of a puzzle, contributing to make a picture of your mathematical prowess. With each problem solved, you sharpen your analytical thinking and enhance your problem-solving abilities. Beyond the numbers and formulas, know that your journey in mathematics is a gateway to, end, to endless possibilities. Together, let us embrace the joy of learning, celebrate our triumphs, and support each other through the challenges. Let us bear the dream big, strive for excellence, and seize every opportunity to grow both academically and personally. And now, let's proceed to previous discussion to the classroom rules. That will be discussed by Ms. Dilakos. So, for our classrooms and reminders, we have five rules. The first one is the attendance and functionality. So, make sure that you arrive on time in our class and I will take the attendance at the beginning. And the second one is respect and courtesy. And this is very important. You need to respect your fellow classmates, your teachers, and the school property always. And if anyone has any questions, just raise your hand. And if anyone wants to answer the question I have asked, just raise your hand. And if someone is speaking, listen at them only and don't make any noises. The third one is preparation and materials. So make sure before you arrive in our class, you have all the materials that you will need, like your textbook, the notebook, pen, and the fourth one is the participation. So I'm expecting that everyone will participate during our class discussion of activities and school works. And if anyone doesn't understand the context of the discussion, just ask and we will help. And the fifth one is the classroom ethic. So to have an environment where everyone focus, is we need to make the um, environment where the noise level is a minimum conducting environments so that everyone will be focused on discussion and listen. And for our reminder, please follow the guide protocols and guidance set by your teachers if you don't want to get in trouble. So that's all for the class rules and the reminders. So for now, let's proceed to the previous discussion that will be discussed by Sir Johnson. Now class, we will talk about polynomials. First, what is polynomials? Polynomials are a direct expression that consists of variables and coefficients. Variables are also sometimes called indeterminates. First, type of polynomial is monomial. Second is polynomial. Third is binomial. Fourth is trinomial. And fifth to the last is multinomial. <coughs> First, we will talk about the content of this first is coefficient. The coefficient is nearby variable. Variable is a letter in short. And constant is numbers only. And the term is this. First term and second term. Now, what is monomial? Monomial is only consists one term. For example, two a b. This is monomial because this is only one term. And polynomials is consists of two or more terms. For example, this is two a b plus three a. And more of. <coughs> The 
polynomials is consists of two or can I add more term. I add more uh, what's this? Constant. And this term is a group. This consists on only one term. And third is binomial. What is binomial? Binomial is consists of two non zero terms. This is my number because it consists of only two terms. And trinomial is like this plus four. Because it, uh, it consists of three terms. And multinomial is consists of two or more terms than two or more than three. <coughs> This is what we call now is one dynamic because it consists a more than three terms. And this is the recall of our topic. Now we will proceed to the next topic. Good afternoon class. I am Sir Delia. Are you all ready for our new topic today? And here is the objective or the goal that the student should achieve. First objective, describe the importance of understanding factoring and how to use it in real-life situations such as finding the area or perimeter consecutive integers and the number problem. For the objective number two, demonstrate proficiency in factoring polynomials by accurately and efficiently solving a variety of practices problems and exercises. And for the last objective is participate actively in the class discussion. And now, our topic is about and our topic our topic is about solving problems involving factor of polynomials. Here are the different following properties and that will help you to justify every step in your solution. For the first property is, is here is Sir Brueta. <coughs> okay class, now I will discuss the first property which is additive inverse property. Now as you can see the additive inverse property, who want to read the definition of additive inverse property? Okay, no one know what to read? Okay. The additive inverse property or the opposite side or the negative or a number that when added to a group yield zero in symbol a plus negative a is equal to zero. Now, now you know the additive inverse property is the value, the value that you can add it to the original number is equal to zero or the result is zero. Now, I give you an example of additive inverse property. 3 plus negative 3 is equals to 0. As you can see, the basic example of additive inverse property. Now, I give you the second example of additive inverse property. A, A, plus negative 8a is equal to 0. Now, I give you a question about additive inverse property. Zero is the given number. Zero is the identity. In 
symbol e plus zero equals a for example i plus zero equals five. First, three times five, 
equals to 10 minus 10 times 3 is equals to 9. 15 minus 9 is equal to 6. This is how operate. This is how you can apply distribution property of multiplication. Now, for additional property, for addition property of equality or APE, we will discuss by addition.
plus 3 is equal to 0. Now, theta plus is x minus 3 is equal to 0. Then, plus, since 0 na siya is, oh, gagamit naman tayo ngayon ng addition property of equality. Para, ano, para masecure lang na, para, ano, para, dito, magpakita natin kung, kung tama ba yung nakuma natin yung mga numbers or yung mga factors. Now, x minus 3 plus 3 is equal to 0 plus 3. Now, so kami that is x plus 3 minus 3 is equal to 0 minus 3. Now, plus So, isisolve na, so, is na natin siya. Now, negative 3 plus 3 is equal to 0. Kasi na lang, mati na yun, busy mo na kasi 0 na siya. Now, sa kami na, 0 plus 3 ang sagot is 3. Check na po natin, yung una, positive. Positive din siya. Now, sa kami na is x plus 3 minus 3, since positive to and negative to, mati na yun, minus na lang tayo. And, Positive 3 minus 3 is equal to 0. Divisible na naman yan. Ngayon, 0 minus 3 is negative 3. Ngayon, yung tama na naman yung nakuha natin. Si negative 3. Negative 3 din yung nakuha natin. Long class. Ang result na equations natin is ito na. Tama yan. Ngayon, paano natin mag-confirm na tama talaga? I-check natin ngayon. I-check natin siya. Now, Gagamit tayo ng substitution method. Since tama natin yung number, uh, ang sagot dito sa so final number is si 3. Ngayon, gagamit tayo ng substitution method para makita natin na tama talaga yan. Ang x natin is si, si 3. Positive and negative. Kasi positive and negative nga. 
plus a plus seven plus is if six times negative ten seven, masagot niya is negative one six two. So yung nakuha natin factor is tama. Yun lang plus. So for our problem number three, and this is the last problem. Um, square, an area of a square is 25y squared minus 100y plus 100 squared. Equality. In times natin both side by 1 fifth. Kasi 
para ma-answer daw 5. 5 days para ma-answer daw. And then, 10, 10 divided by 5 is equal to 2. Ito ang value ng 2 natin. Dahil dalawang 3 yan, isa dalawang 1. So, may na, parang, so, ang value na natin dito is 5y minus 10, 5y minus 10. Ngayon, kapag in-input nyo yung y, kasi diba, nakuha natin value ng y is 2. Pag sinulat nyo ito lahat, ay dahil itong 25y squared minus 100 plus 100, pag pinunta nyo yung y din nyo ng 2, ang kakalabasan ng 0. Okay, let's, let's try 25y ay 25 times 2 squared minus 100 times 2 plus 2 times 2, 4 times 25, that is 100, minus 100 times 2, 200, plus 100. The raw positive 100, that is 200, minus 200, equals to 0. Then the thing is 5y minus 10. Ready? 5y, we're going to do it. 5 times 2, 10, minus 10, equals to 0. Ngayon, sir, Pag gano'n, sir, kapag it, pag y 0, ay kapag 2 is equal to y, magiging 0 yung value. So, ang ibig sabihin ba na 0 to, 0 to, 0 to? Sabihin, in, inexistent yung square natin. Hindi. Yung y na yan, kaya nakuha natin yung 2 kasi gusto natin, nag-equate tayo sa 0 eh. Kaya 0 yung makukuha natin natin. So, eto, ang pinakasagot na dyan is 5y minus 5y minus 10 na ang sagot na ito na yung ito yung area na square at ito ang side of square. Ayun na yung deck. Let's say sabihin natin, baguhin natin yung value na y na hindi siya mag equal sa 0. Sabihin natin na 25 tapos 4 squared minus kapagdan natin yung value ng y ng ano ah, ng 4. 100 times 4 plus 100. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 25 is 400. Tama ba? Check it. 400. 400 minus... 400 minus... 100 times 4 is 400. Plus 100 is equal to 100. Ito, yung, ito na yung area ngayon ng square natin. Let's say naman sa 5y, gawin natin 5 times 4 minus 10. 5 times 4, that is 20. Minus 10 is equal to 10. So, tingnan natin kung tama ba. Yung 100 is yung area natin. And then 10 yung side. At tandaan nyo, anong area ng circle? 100 is equal to 10 squared. Diba? 10 squared is equal to 100. 100 kaya sabihin, tama yung nakuha natin sa word. That's all. May tanong pa ba? We are done with the discussion of solving problems involving factor of polynomials. And now, we are going to explore the practical applications of polynomials in our daily lives. Polynomials are not just mathematical constructions. They have real-world uses that are relevant to various applications such as in engineering. Polynomials are used to design structures. They help engineers determine optimal dimensions and parameters for bridge, buildings, and electrical circuits. Computer science. Polynomials form the basis of algorithm used in image processing, cryptography, and data compression techniques. Budget it. When you are in a supermarket, polynomials will help you to calculate a complex equation. In economics, real-world economic problems often involve complex polynomials and their factors provide valuable insights for decision making. Now, let's move on to our learning task for today. I will give you all 30 minutes to answer this task and 
After the answer key, we will be having a group activity. Here is the learning task that you need to answer. I give you all 30 minutes to answer it now.
point last now that we have to repeat the lesson and give some activity and deciding. It is for some reflection in one or sheet of paper. Of your take a moment to think about what you learned, what you have learned today. We will be using the following from to guide our reflection. For, okay, number one, I understand that black. So the number two is I realize that black and that's for our class and class dismiss. Okay class, now I will discuss the first property which is added in first property as you can see. Thank you.